It's Halloween on the high seas. And we're sailing on the Disney Wish. Ahoy, ma'am fam. We're sailing on the Disney Wish for one of those specialty cruises. I'm so excited. I've always wanted to go on the Halloween cruises, so there are special characters on board, special Halloween entertainment, trick-or-treating. We're bringing you with us, not only for all the Halloween fun, but we've got some really cool new-to-us experiences on Disney Cruise Line. And a massive thank you to Be Our Guest Vacations, a part of the world of DVC family, including our friends over at DVC Rental Store. They handled everything for us with their travel agency. They booked all of our dining reservations, our spa package, everything. They handled it. It was so great, so easy. So huge shout out to them. We'll be talking more about them in a little bit, but for now, let's get on board. It's time to go. All right, it's our turn to board. Super excited to get back on board the Disney Wish. A couple of pro tips when you are getting on board a Disney cruise ship. One, you're gonna need your passport, um, or some countries they'll actually accept a birth certificate and a driver's license, but make sure you check uh, that information before you board, and you're gonna need that in your carry-on. Also in your carry-on, you're gonna need anything you might need for the first day. So medication, if you want a swimsuit, typically the rooms aren't available till a little bit in the afternoon, um, so if you have anything you need urgently, pack it with you. Also pro tips, adults can bring on two standard size bottles of wine or a six pack of beer each, but that has to go in your carry-on as well. You cannot put that in your checked baggage. And last pro tip before we board, check in for the cruise is 30 days out and it starts at midnight Eastern time. You want to get on there as soon as possible. Refresh the pages a few times because the earlier you sign up for check-in, the earlier time you can get on the ship and uh, eat delicious lunch at Mickey's Festival of Foods and start enjoying the beautiful Disney Cruise Line ship. So uh, let's go. I'm super excited. We got boarding group seven. I was very proud of that. You know what I'll never understand? What's that? Why Donald wears a swimsuit but not pants. That's us! <laughs> Look at the spooky tree! So this is the beautiful Halloween tree. This is what they put in the atriums of the different cruise lines. They all have a different look. Um, and there's actually a fun like light show projection situation on the tree a couple times a day. So I'm excited to watch that. Also, did you see bells up there? Oh no, it's Cinderella! They even have all the garland here as well. It's so pretty. Oh my god. Up, oh, up! Oh, we lost her. Oh, the windows! Wait, is that Isma on a window? That's incredible. Oh, it's all villains. We got a pumpkin, Isma, a bat, a well-known Disney villain, the bat. Alan. Yes. I have the most important question I'm ever going to ask you. Do you think they'll let me go on the slide right now because it's open house? Uh, probably. Let's find out. Apparently the answer is yes. <laughs> the very speedy slide dropped me off in the Ocean Near Club. It's open house right now, so anyone can come check it out. So if you've got kids, this is when you can come look at it. And these spaces are really, really cool. Um, I remember being a kid on the Wonder and basically not wanting to hang out with my parents the whole cruise because I was having so much fun in the kids clubs. But I just wanted to point out how cute this wallpaper is. Look at all these characters. There's Herc and Donald and Raya and Sisu and Polka. This is adorable. <gasps> this is adorable. This is the Imagineering Lab. I'm too old to be here, right, Kirsten? I can't, well, normally though, I can't come hang out here later and make, make things up. Look at this Imagineering stuff, the helmets and the vests. Alan. Yo, they do have a 3D printer. A cool thing we just learned from the cast members are the Imagineers hats with the names are the Imagineers that built the kids club. And most importantly, that one says Louise, which is my middle name. So basically, I'm an Imagineer. You use that logic to say you've been to space. I've been to space. Okay, this is, so I, my theme park loving heart is nerding out right now. Look at this, it's a vehicle for guardians. You've got stuff from uh, Avengers Campus. You've got clay models from Cars Land, Dumbo. This is so cool. My gosh. Pirates, partners, figment. Like this is so cool. God, this is why I love this ship. The detail in this ship is unbelievable. And if you're a Disney fan, this is the ship. Like, <gasps> they even have the magic eye trick that they use on Figment where the butterfly appears and disappears. Like, come on. The detail everywhere. Unbelievable. 
But we have to get out of the kids' clubs because I'm getting too jealous of the children. <laughs> I know we're hungry and going to lunch, but there's my favorite piece of art on the ship. Oh, princesses helping princesses. I love it so much. I have it in my office. They actually have a bunch of custom art made for the Wish, and you can order prints of it on board um, at one of the little art kiosks up uh, in the atrium, and you can bring a little piece of the magic home with you. But I just love that the custom art is all over and looking at the different pieces, but that one's my favorite. Okay, we are now headed to grab a bite at Mickey's Festival of Foods. Festival of Foods. We're still trying to make that happen. While we are on the subject of dining, it is important to know that you will not know your rotational dining schedule until you get on board the ship. While our travel agent did an incredible job booking everything that we could have wanted, including a Paolo dinner, when we saw how it lined up with our schedule of events, we wanted to do some alterations. So we headed and were able to move our Paolo dinner and even pick up a brunch at Enchanté. You can also use that time to rebook your dining rotations or book Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique which is why it's important to have an earlier boarding time, or at least try to get an earlier boarding time if you want to make those adjustments. Mickey and Friends Festival of Foods, or Feastival as I continue to try and call it, is without a doubt the best quick service on a Disney Cruise Line ship. It's five different eateries, each with a different kind of cuisine, all customizable. You've got Donald's Cantina, that one's my favorite, tacos, bowls, tons of different hot sauces to choose from. You've got Mickey's Smokestack Barbecue, where you're gonna have brisket and cornbread and mac and cheese and other kinds of barbecue treats, a couple different sauces there as well. You've got Goofy's Grill, which is going to be your cheeseburgers, your iconic cruise line chicken tenders, hot dogs, Daisy's Pizza Pies, which is of course pizza, and Minnie's Ice Cream, where you can get soft serve ice cream. This is one of the reasons I love The Wish so much, because while dining on any Disney cruise ship is lovely, the quick service here, unbelievable. We've been on this cruise ship for 30 minutes, and my man's already got a platter of chicken tenders. Picked up some goodies from my favorite of the Festival of Foods locations, Donald's Cantina. I opted for tacos, Alan opted for a bowl, but I love that it's a create your own situation. The cast members will ask what you want and add it accordingly. All the ingredients are really fresh, delicious, plus there's a fantastic hot sauce bar. I don't even want to tell you how many tacos I ate over the cruise. And of course, I had to pick up some chicken tenders from Goofy's Grill. Listen, I don't know what they do aboard the Disney Cruise Line to chicken tenders, but I'm convinced it's witchcraft. They're always incredible. Even Aunt May gets it. Here's the best part of the wish. They fixed the buttons, y'all. Before, they were like the magic buttons, like an elf, and people would lean up against them and everyone would get pressed. And now, it's fixed. But also, look at the wallpaper. It's all so cute. I feel like when you first get on a cruise ship, there's like a day where you're like, where am I? But I'm very excited because we're in the Cinderella section this time. Look at the light fixtures. Like, oh, everything on this ship. Look at the little detail. Look at this. We were in Tiana last time? Yeah. Now we're in Cinderella because this is the castle at sea. So it's got a very heavy princess theme. And each of the, the floors have different princesses. Here's ours. Our room is ready. We've got our little keys. Here we go. It's Frozen themed in here. Look at this beautiful artwork. So we did get a veranda room. This is my preferred class of room um, because I love the little balcony and it's really lovely to sit out here with your room service, coffee or pastries in the morning and overlook the ocean. Now I understand right now, it's a beautiful view of Port Canaveral, but just imagine if you will in a few hours uh, that it will be the ocean and you can think about all the sharks out there. That's what normal people do. Um, the ver uh, This veranda room for a Fortnite cruise with the Halloween on the high seas experience was just over $1,800 per person before any taxes, fees, or prepaid gratuities, which I do recommend booking just because it makes it a little bit easier. Um, and with all of that included for both of us, it was about $3,900.
And again, we had everything booked by our wonderful travel agent, Kim, at Be Our Guest Vacation. So she pulled all of the dates and price points for this time of year that she knew we wanted to go. She showed us the comparisons of the different rooms. She helped us pick which stateroom um, we wanted to be in based on the better preferred locations of the ship because some people like to be closer to the adult things or the kids things or um, some sides are quieter, help with motion sick. So she was able to guide us into choosing the right room for us. Uh, she also booked, again, she booked our cruise for for us. She booked all of our extracurriculars for us and um, none of that costs anything. And that's the best part of this is she took care of all of those things for free. Uh, it doesn't cost you, the guest, anything. And in fact, it can save you a little bit of money because she can find better deals for you that um, if you booked it on your own, you'd have to either try and go rebook or maybe you wouldn't qualify or something, but they got it taken care of for you. Anyway, let's do a little rapid fire room tour. We have bathroom part A. Here's your royal throne. Towels, sink, oh my gosh. It's finally happened, friends. It's not H2O anymore. Rip. Mirror. And that part of the bathroom is separate from this part, which has your shower. Still not H2O, but Alan's convinced it's the same product rebranded. Another sink, another mirror. Not all rooms come equipped with an Allen. In the closet, you've got your robes. Everybody out, get your life belts on. Pretty decent amount of hanging room too. Also in the closet over here, you've got a laundry bag, as well as a safe and more hanging room. Anyway, <laughs> over here, we have the bed with the beautiful frozen artwork. I love the pillowcases, just the intricate little delicate details. Your wish blanket here. The last ship we were on was the Magic, and it's very abundant that these rooms are bigger now going in those two ships back to back. Now, this is obviously a queen room, but you could actually fit more guests in here if you wanted to turn the couch into a futon situation. You can just set that request up in uh, when you're booking your cruise, or you can let your stateroom attendant know. You've got the vanity section, lots of drawers, a lighted mirror for makeup. There's all kinds of cute little goodies in here, including your room service order forms if you wanna do that. Some postcards and stationery if you would like to pen someone a letter. This is also your wine cooler fridge. So this isn't gonna keep things super duper cold, but if you did bring bottles of wine on, you can put them in there. And of course, the most important part of the room tour, the hair dryer. This is a magic hair dryer, look at that. That's pretty good. And even better, because you got your nozzle. All right, I give that a nine out of 10 for a cruise line hair dryer. That's impressive. And here's that veranda. You've got chair number one, table, chair number two, Beautiful outlook, and if you are sailing with other parties, other rooms, they can take these dividers down. You just let them know that you're all sailing together when you book it, um, and then you can have a big party deck. Speaking of a party deck, are you ready to go to our champagne tasting, or are we napping? Tasting time. We did get some Castaway Club goodies. That is the name for people that have sailed more than one time. Alan and I are both silver, so we got these cute luggage tags oh these are lanyards oh so you can like walk around and put your yeah, yeah. and then we got a brand new cooler hey <laughs> a brand new camel <laughs> sorry that's a lad <laughs> i don't know why that's a man it's the tenders uh, well if we can ever find our way there through the ship we are on our way to our first event on the disney wish and that is for a champagne tasting. This was $70 per person. It is more expensive than some of the other tastings because it is champagne. But these types of tastings are a great way to explore different varieties of your favorite libation. Uh, we've done a number of these in the past from martini to rum, and I'm looking forward to this one. Never done champagne before. Captain's log, start date, October 2, 2023. We have successfully made it to the stairway. Still getting distracted by the artwork that is objectively beautiful. We may never make it. I think one of the things that sets the Disney Wish apart from all the other cruise ships within the fleet is its sheer dedication to the history of Disney artwork and theming and the fact that you have so many of these items that have been brought out from the vault as replicas to represent the history of Disney. It's 
just wonderful. A thing that I am particularly well equipped to talk about are the fact that Disney has created very specific colors that they use throughout their animated feature films. And they have those represented here with their names, Kaba Blue, Edelweiss White, and I can't read the pink one in the back there. Molly, could you do me a favor? And Lena. We're just going to go Lena Pink. I just think that's so neat that these animators thought to themselves, you know what? We don't have the colors we want to use. Let's just go make our own. I'm always going to love Mary Blair concept art. Gorgeous. It's so beautiful. Her animation style is wonderful. Oh, look at that. It's the bubbles from the bubble chandelier and nightingales. Here's what I was mentioning earlier. The floors are all themed to different princesses. So you have Sleeping Beauty. I think this is Moana and Cinderella. And then the actual rooms themselves have different princesses. Like we have Frozen. Last time we had Princess and the Frog. But each of the floors has different carpet work, different light fixtures. I just, I love this ship. And I know that's like a hot take because a lot of people don't like certain things about the ship. But as a Disney fan paying for a Disney cruise, I love that this is undoubtedly Disney every space and but it's like beautiful and delicate and not cheesy in my opinion. And I'm also again hot take I'm happy to give up the midship elevators and stairs for favor of more bars more entertainment and just more space to actually interact with the different cruise elements. Look at the detail look at the, this is tile work from the bayou and this is the railing design like it's just everywhere you look it's beautiful it makes me want to cry it's like when all these hats and all these hearts come together to make our very first wish, that's when the enchantment truly begins. So on the count of three, wish for enchantment, wish for adventure, and call it out together. Wish for two, one, two. Are you ready? One, two, three. Wishes to a uh, Caught the cute little wishing show in the lobby where they hand out magic wands and then everyone makes a wish and the beautiful, beautiful chandelier twinkles. It definitely doesn't make me cry. And uh, now we're headed to Nightingales, which we were just mentioning. This is the piano bar on board. It's beautiful. It's one of my favorite lounges on the ship. Um, it's very subtly themed to Sing Sweet Nightingale, the song in Cinderella when she's cleaning and singing beautifully and her stepsisters are singing um, not so beautifully, uh, but this is a great place to come for live music. Definitely will be back here on the cruise at some point. You can check the Cruise Navigator app to see when different set times will be here, what kind of music they'll be singing. Uh, but for now, this is where our champagne tasting is. Well, we were asked not to film during the class, but it was absolutely fantastic. It's learned a lot about the creation and making of champagne. I want a bird. Yes, Molly did answer a question correctly and received a cocktail as a reward in a bird glass. I love winning out. My competitive spirit takes over and every one of these cocktail classes, they do different trivia that we've been to so far. And uh, I just really like winning in, in general, but I especially like winning when I win a bird. It is great to win another cocktail. That is correct. Uh, I just really like these classes. Like Alan said, this one's a little more expensive than some of the other ones. They're usually around 50 This one, again, was 70 But we were drinking very nice champagne, tried a, quite a variety of things. They gave us truffles. And these classes are really informative because if you're a lifelong learner, like I am, because learning is cool. Learning is cool. You get to learn a lot about whatever kind of alcohol it is, whether it be champagne or beer or gin or whatever it is, and I love doing these. And plus, what a better way to kick off a cruise than a champagne tasting. Right, champagne. champagne. Right, champagne tasting and then a mustard drill. I'm more of a ketchup drill. Everybody to your stations. Mustard drill complete, and if the background audio couldn't tell you, we are getting ready for the sail away party.
party. Okay, when you're on a Disney cruise and the horn plays a Disney song, when you wish upon a star, it's so magical. But I don't think they did this last time. Maybe it just wasn't paying attention. <laughs> because Minnie's the captain of this ship, the chant wasn't M I C K E Y, it was M I N N I E. And like. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's really good. It's really cute. It's the best way to get excited for your cruise. I agree. Well, with that, it's time to get dressed for our show. And dinner tonight. We have the Marvel Dining Experience. We do. So Disney Dining on a cruise ship is done rotationally. So there are certain restaurants on the cruise that will tell you where to go when. And then you can fill in um, other nights if you want to do adult dining or you want to do something more casual or what have you. But tonight, yeah, we've got Marvel and yep. it sees the adventure night. That's the show. It's super cute. So let's go get in dinner where. And maybe we'll have time for a, a pre-dinner cocktail. Perhaps. Or a character meeting. Both equally important. Stopping by Hook's Barbary for our pre-show beverage. Now, Hook's Barbary is primarily a barber shop, but it's also a place that has a hidden bar and some fine craft whiskeys, bourbons, and scotches to consume. So I'm looking forward to an old-fashioned here. Now, last time we were on The Wish, Hook's Barbary had perhaps, in my opinion, the best beverage that we had while on the ship. Their old fashions are absolutely phenomenal, and I'm looking forward to having it again. One of the things I love the most about Hook's Barbary are all the little details that are hidden away throughout the shelves. You have multiple references uh, with crocodiles. that reference TikTok Croc, which is Captain Hook's arch nemesis. A very piratey feel here. You also have the pocket watch, the spyglass, all hidden amongst this area, which references Captain Hook and the Jolly Roger. And a real deep cut here, we have the seagull, which references the seagull that landed on Captain Hook's face as he was getting shaved by Mr. Smee. Uh, that poor seagull actually had its rump shaved instead of Captain Hook's very robust five o'clock shadow. And up top here, tucked away beneath the shelves, is a mermaid, which would reference Mermaid Lagoon. And I actually just noticed this, this lantern that sits here, would be a callback to the lantern that Captain Hook traps Tinkerbell in in the movie. And when we say you can get a good old fashioned here, this is what we mean. There are dozens of different bourbons and whiskeys and ryes. There are different bitters and uh, flavors and additives. They can smoke different drinks. And if you're an old fashioned or a bourbon or scotch drinker, this is somewhere you need to come. Also another cool Easter egg, Captain Hook's hook is up here at the top. <sighs> I love this place. Me too. What'd you get? What I love about this place is that it's completely customizable to whatever your flavor palette is. So I told the rice the bartender that I like bourbon, but I don't like things too sweet. So he started me off with an Old Forester bourbon, which is a darker bourbon, so it's hard to make it too sweet. So what he did add to it was a little bit of bourbon maple syrup just to curb how boozy that is. Um, also aromatic bitters and just a little bit of a white chocolate, um, but it it's, smells amazing. Added some cherries on there. I'm very excited to try it. Uh, and I hope it's not too sweet and just perfection like the last one I had here. And for me, I said I wanted a rye old fashioned, so I got the Rare Perfection 14 year rye uh, with a very cool piratey bottle. Love that. With some spiced cherry syrup. Some cherries on top. And I'm very excited. Cheers. Hands down best spot on the ship. So good. If you're a bourbon drinker, this is a must, and it's not advertised as a bar anywhere. You just have to know that in the evenings only, they have a bourbon bar here. So, you're welcome. I'm gonna live here. In the barber shop? Yeah. Thank you, yeah. I am truly obsessed with the portholes having different characters on them. Even that one? Not that one. Oh, okay. Not that one. But the rest of them, very, very cool. And now we are headed to the Walt Disney Theater for the nighttime entertainment. Tonight's show is Seas, the adventure spelled Seas, like S-E-A-S. -E also, this ship is like motoring right now. Moving and grooving. So if I fall over, it's not the old fashioned to blame. Mostly. We are rolling. One of the best things about sailing on a Disney cruise line is the entertainment. You are getting Disney level of entertainment. Uh, most nights of the ship, they are gonna do two different productions, the same production twice, so that you can flip flop it whether you have early or late dinner. Seize the Adventure is my favorite of the original shows on The Wish because this is what I call your montage show. We have a bunch of different characters in it versus just one story being told. And I love these and they always make me cry. It's also a little bit shorter than The Little Mermaid or Aladdin, which are later on the cruise. Also, there's no videotape 
sleeping inside the theater, so we'll see you after. Just saw Seize the Adventure. That show is so good that I forgive them for including music from Finding Nemo the Musical. Everybody performs incredibly. It's such a beautiful medley. I just... I love a montage show. I love all the characters and all the music coming together. My favorite part is when there is a mashup between Elsa, Merida, and Moana. Immediate tears. But we gotta get up to Tiana. Oh, Tiana absolutely crushed. Her voice was unreal. I do have a weak spot for Hercules whenever I hear those French horns come in for Go the Distance. It's beautiful. If you see one show on this ship, it should be that one. But now, We've had a change of scenery. We're ready to embarrass people at trivia. It's Disney Parks trivia. I'd hope we do okay. We are at the Bayou for trivia. This is a Princess and the Frog themed lounge that does live music. They obviously do trivia. They've got some great cocktails as well as beignets. And we've got a little bit of time until our dinner reservation. So obviously we're here at Disney Parks trivia. Trivia is always a must-do for me on a Disney cruise. They do several kinds of trivia throughout the trip. They do adults-only trivia. They do kids-only trivia. This is all ages trivia. They do Disney. They do Pixar. They do sports. They do general knowledge. And I love trivia. I'm super competitive. And the useless amount of information in my brain is particularly applicable at a Disney Cruise Line set of trivia games. So uh, whenever I get on the ship, whatever activities you want to do, make sure you go through the Explore tab on the Disney Cruise Line app. And that'll show you every single time for the whole cruise characters, trivia, other activities, heart whatever you like, and then it'll show up in your plans so that you have a customized list of everything that you want to do during the cruise. Now obviously, who would I be if I was going to sit in the bayou and not order a beignet? Obviously you know that's not the case. Now the beignets are not included, they're an additional cost, but they're only a couple dollars. The two of these were like $2.50. Uh, they also have some fancier beignets, but you know me, I love a classic. Beignets! The perfect appetizer. They're warm and fresh and doughy. How did trivia go? Winner's medals. This is how it went. We also learned that there are apparently many different characters on these medals, to which Molly replied, we must win them all. So... It's now my mission to win one of every character. That's a little dramatic. I have other things I want to do on the ship, but I do hope we get to go to more trivias and win more medals, and I love trivia on the cruise ships. I think there's a lot of Park trivia was good. We got 19 out of 20 right, and the one that I think we got wrong was because we actually haven't been to Tokyo Disneyland yet. If we Max was here, we would have gotten that right. Max would have helped us with that one, but it's because I'm trying not to research so... I'm like having this weird thing because we're going to Tokyo soon and I want to know a lot, but I also don't want to know things so that it's a surprise and that, like, it's a weird thing. Doesn't matter. We still won. Winning is winning. And I just love the trivia. There's obviously lots of other activities you can do. There are drawing classes. There are movies, um, both up on the deck as well as in the movie theater, like newer movies. But trivia is my favorite kind of like onboard activity. Love some trivia. I hope to win. Dinner? Okay, we are in queue for our night one dinner at Worlds of Marvel. This is an interactive dinner experience led by Scott Lang, aka Ant-Man, and Hope, aka the Wasp. You might see some of your other favorite Marvel characters as well, like Captain America, Spider-Man, who's to say? As always, we're going to take copious notes about our dinner and the dishes we get, and then do some voiceover afterwards so that we don't disturb our table mates while we are at dinner filming. Yeah, it's important to note, especially if you're a small party eating on a Disney cruise line, they're most likely going to pair you with another couple small parties, so we don't want to be those annoying guests. So uh, we're going to go enjoy the experience, but it will be like you're there with us. Yes. So here we go. Bye. Do you think that Ant-Man will care that we are winners? Worlds of Marvel Quantum Encounter is an interactive dinner experience featuring Ant-Man, the Wasp, and you may have a few surprises from some other characters. I love the screens all around the dining experience that show different characters from the MCU, different technologies, and at this dinner, Hope and Scott are demonstrating some of Pym Technologies' quantum cores. The menu here at Worlds of Marvel showcases dish from across the Marvel Universe, from apps, 
like the steamed bao buns from WEB and crispy breaded fried shrimp from Pim Technologies, a selection of Wakandan salads, soups from the Sokovian kettle, berry berry spiced pork chop from Wakanda, chicken schnitzel from Sokovia, a couple of vegetarian options, and lighter notes like the land shawarma salad from the Shawarma Palace in New York City. Dinner begins with bread service, which features marble loaves and a red pepper dipping sauce. This is actually quite good. The bread is soft, and the red pepper dipping sauce has just a little bit of zest from it. Mix it up from regular butter. Always a nice way to start the meal. You like this? I made this. It's a swarm. Adorable that you think you made a swan. Anyway, I want to shrink this suitcase and the swan to make it easier to take home. Well, making it smaller would make it better. Mm. Friday, initiate power-up sequence. Target acquired. Quantum cores are online. Prepare to push your buttons. Three, two, one, activate! Pretty sweet, right? Oh, Scott. Mm. <clears throat> oh. For my app, I picked up the steamed bao buns. This is seared ginger orange pork belly, toasted sesame seeds, pickled daikon, spring onions, and a mirin soy honey glaze. This is a pretty good bao bun. It's a small serving for an app, but it's very full of flavor. I really liked the mirin soy honey glaze. I thought that was a great compliment with the crisp pickled daikon and spring onions. I really enjoyed this. I decided to get the Hearts of Palm with cilantro and lime, which is a gluten-free plant-based appetizer from Wakanda Design Group. It's made with cucumber, purple onion, bell pepper, sweet potato, spiced yellow pepper, orange, and infinity stone popcorn. I'm not going to lie to you. I got it for infinity stone popcorn because I wanted to know what that was. Turns out it's super sweet, artificially fruit flavored popcorn. Now the dish itself was very fresh, lots of good flavor. It was a little bit cooler than I expected it to be. It didn't wow me, especially not that popcorn, unfortunately, but I'm glad I tried it. And if you are a vegan eater, this may be a good dish for you. I also tried the kartoffel soup, which Wanda, I'm sure, would correct to that pronunciation. This is a creamed potato soup with carrots, celery, knockwurst, and thyme. It's a pretty solid soup, very creamy. Uh, I like the thyme flavor coming through. I wish it had a little bit of spice to it, but I really enjoy the uh, crunchy croutons on top. As far as salad goes, Molly and I both picked up the Iceberg Wedge with candy pecans, smoked bacon lardons, black and globe radish, and Maytag blue cheese. This is a solid salad. It's a whole lot of lettuce with the Iceberg Wedge. Pretty good blue cheese dressing. My personal favorite part of it is the candy pecans. For my entree, I picked up the lamb shawarma salad with slow roasted cumin spice pulled lamb leg and mini pitas with iceberg, endive, romaine lettuce, sumac onions, vine tomatoes, pickled red cabbage, roasted chickpeas, and a cucumber and lemon yogurt dressing. I've got to be honest, I didn't go into this with a lot of high hopes or expectations, but I was very surprised. The lamb was cooked well, still very moist. I thought the salad portion size was great, and I really enjoyed the lemon yogurt dressing. The one thing that I would say I didn't enjoy as much were the pitas, which were a little bit dry and grainy to me, but the rest of the dish, really solid. Anyway, sorry for the delay, but I think I fixed the issue with the quantum cores. Friday, open up the cores. Target acquired. Quantum cores are online. For my entree, I was torn between two. One I knew I would enjoy because I'd had it before or try something new and our amazing server Nova said get both. So I did. The first was the chicken schnitzel, also from Sokovia. It's panko crusted chicken breast with butter, sauteed potatoes, caramelized onions, long green beans, lemon, anchovy, and capers. This was mid. It honestly tasted like something I would make in college with like a shake and bake situation for the chicken. It was a little bit dry, didn't have a ton of flavor to it. The potatoes were fine, the onions were fine, the green beans were fine, but nothing about this dish was something that was memorable and I definitely wouldn't order it again. And the second dish, the one I knew I would enjoy, is the vegetarian ricotta gnocchi from Wakanda. It's made with fontina cheese, caramelized grape tomato confit, broccoli rabe, and an arugula pesto. I really like this dish. It's got a little bit of natural sweetness from that caramelized grape tomato sauce. Um, I really enjoy the pesto, which has got a nice herbaceous flavor to it, and it's very, very cheesy, and the gnocchi was cooked well. Honestly, I would get this one again or try the salad like Alan did, or 
If I'm being perfectly honest, next time I go to World of Marvel, I'm just going to ask for two of the Iceberg Wedge for my entree. For my dessert, I got the Quantum Key Lime Pie. This is Key Lime Curd, Raspberry Gel, and Whipped Lime Ganache. Now, I know I got this the first time I went on the Wish, and I wasn't overly impressed, but I have to say, this time, there was improvement. Is it my favorite key lime pie ever? Absolutely not. But it was a solid key lime pie, and I did enjoy it more than the first time on the Wish. For me, this time around, there was more tart lime flavor. It wasn't overwhelmed by the raspberry gel, and I just think that it had more of that citrusy component that I would want from a key lime pie. I decided to give the subatomic sticky date pudding a whirl because Scott did say it was his favorite. It's got salted coconut macaroon, balsamic caramel glaze, and vanilla ice cream. It was fine. It had a good caramel flavor. I wish that I could taste the coconut a little bit more, creamy vanilla ice cream. It was, again, it was a mediocre dessert. I probably would get the cheesecake bite again next time because uh, I prefer a cheesecake to a date pudding, but I was glad I tried it, and I don't think you'd be mad if you ordered this if you prefer date pudding. Overall, Worlds of Marvel is not going to blow you out of the water with their menu. In fact, I think it's our least favorite menu of the rotational dining options on the Wish. But if you are a Marvel fan or your family is filled with Marvel fans, it's worth checking out because of the entertainment options and the surprise visit that you get at the end of the dining experience. Long time no see. Done with dinner, and I gotta say, I do think Worlds of Marvel is my least favorite menu of the three main dinings, but man, do I love that show. It's such a good show, such a good time ending with Spider-Man coming out to visit everybody. As a Marvel fan, I think it's really fun. Scott Lang is hilarious, and also, what is his skincare routine? Oh, Paul Rudd? I don't know. Is he aging in reverse? Yeah, it's frustrating. Did he make a deal with the devil? Perhaps. I would love to know. I would love some information. If he has a reference, um, Paul Rudd, if you're watching this, which you probably are not. Um, anyway, that was amazing, but now a dream is coming true. We're going to go meet the Sandersons. There's there's a pumpkin tree first, but there's Sanderson's sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. P pumpkin tree first, Sanderson's. My bad. Got it out of order. As far as the Halloween tree show goes, there are different trees on every one of the cruise ships in the fleet. And a couple of times throughout the cruise, there will be a bit of a light and projection show on the surface of the tree, and I'm very excited to see it. Trees. What are you doing? Uh, the wishing star went to the moon, and the mystery and merriment of Halloween Pretty cool. We love learning about the pumpkins and Cinderella's story. <sighs> okay, enough about the tree. The Sanderson sister characters are so cute. That's like one of the longest amount of times I've ever waited for a character. I got in line about 40 minutes before they came out and worth it. They were freaking adorable. Mini Winnie. Mini Winnie, Sarah Daisy. <sighs> and Clarabelle Mary. It's just... I mean, Clarabelle truly serving it. Oh, just... Wonderful. Perfect. We can go home. That's yeah. all I wanted out of this cruise. Well, don't worry. We'll be swimming quite a ways. Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd prefer we stay on for the remainder of the cruise. That's true. We've got Paolo. <laughs> we've got Enchante. We've got Halloween. Mouse Grade Night. we got a lot of fun Mouse to be had. Mouse Grade. But... Mouse Man, that was awesome. That was amazing. Well, I don't think we're going to top that. Impossible to. So with that, just going to call it a night, I think. It's been a really fun day aboard the Disney Wish. I love this ship and I'm excited to continue exploring it for the next few days. Uh, but thank you again to our sponsors, Be Our Guest Vacations. Our agent Kim made it so easy. She booked everything for us. Our dining, specialty character interactions, our excursions. 
And what was great is that even if things weren't available when we first booked the cruise, she continued to check back up until we were getting on the cruise. She was emailing me like, hey, by the way, I was able to grab that tasting you wanted. Hey, by the way, Palo opened up. I booked it for you. If you don't want it anymore, I'll cancel it. But it made it so, so easy not to have to worry about anything. We literally just said, here's things we want to do. And she said, I got you. And the president of We Are Guest Vacations is a former cast member, so you know you can trust them and their knowledge. Also, using a travel agent is completely free to you. You get concierge service, you get all this guest service, completely free. You're paying what you would pay if you booked it. And in fact, you may even save a little bit of money because your travel agent is going to continue to look for deals that come out after you've booked. And depending on what cruise you book, you may even get an onboard credit. Well, with that, it has been a crazy day. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe if you are new. Follow us on all of our socials if you want to join in the conversation about this or any video. Join us on Discord. The links for all that, including links to be our guest vacations, down below. Make sure you ask for Kim. That's and until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been so magical. It's been spooktacular. Good night. I hope we can walk back to our room and not fall down. Yeah, it's been very, it very, very rocky. Rocking. We're motoring. Yeah, and in a storm. So. That too.